Welcome to another episode of Jay Lono's Garage. This is my 1952 MG a TD. It's not exactly stock. It's got a uh, 350 block that's been stroked to, I guess, 383. I didn't build this car. This is built by a friend of mine in New England. You know, growing up in Massachusetts, California was all the cool hot rods were, you know, moon equipped and all that kind of stuff. All the But in New England, there's all these guys in the dead of winter when everybody else is freezing, in their garages building really unique and interesting hot rods like this one. And this is the classic <laughs> interpretation of a hot rod. You take a 52 MG, which has the horsepower of, I think, 48, 48 horsepower, and then you put a big Chevy in it, and you stroke it, and you get about, I don't know, 360 to rear wheel, something like that. This was built by a friend of mine, David Stenmark. He's from Rhode Island. Rhode Island is famous at Tasca Ford and a bunch of cool hot rod guys there. And he's had this car almost 40 years, and I acquired it from him. So I said, hey, when you come out to California, tell us about the car, because I didn't build it, he built it. We did a few things to it, but I'll explain that to you in a little bit. David, come on in. How are you? Good, Jay, how you doing? Nice to see you, boy, beautiful job. So you here. bought Thank this you. in 1970. Yes, I did. Okay, so now why did you think, what's the best car to put a big honking Chevy in? Oh, an MG might be good. Well, this is what we do. We see how big a motor we can put in, <laughs> yes. so how small a car, and, and, you're, and you're see the same. what happens. I barely fit in this thing, and, yeah. and I, I'm surprised that and you told me you drove it two, three hours at different races, right? Well, I have, and uh, you must have the same creases on your knees that I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I, I just get it from driving around the block. I mean, this thing's a lot of fun. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. It's got so much horsepower, and it's beautifully done, by the way. The only thing we did to it was he still had the original MG brakes on it. I know. That's crazy. So we uh, called our friends at Willwood, and uh, well, they came over and looked at the car first. Here, take a look. Of course, the biggest problem with a car like this is uh, stopping it. We've got those big drums in the back. That's not too bad, but these are the original MG brakes. I'm sure these were fine. You're turning 10 second quarter miles. These really don't, <laughs> don't hold up that well, as we found out. Uh, so what we do, whenever we have a problem, we call our friends at Willwood. They're right up the street. You know, they make all kinds of disc brakes for, uh, well, all kinds of cars, be they foreign or American. But the nice thing is they have a great engineering department and they can help you adapt their brakes to whatever your needs are. Uh, let's meet Dustin again. Dustin, good to see you again. Hey, good to see you, Jay. You know Dustin, he's been helping us on uh, stuff since we started this garage. And it's really good because brakes is one of those things people tend to neglect. You make it go faster and uh, we'll, we'll figure out stopping it later. But right. I, mean, I mean, these little brakes, are okay going stoplight to stoplight in Burbank, but <laughs> you get on them and I mean, they, just go, they just go up in smoke with the kind of power this thing has. Uh, what are your suggestions here? What do you think we should do? We're gonna keep the drums in the back. Keep the drums in the back. Right. Um, there's two things I would look at. Mm -hmm. First, just the overall hydraulic system. Mm -hmm. uh, drum brakes generally operate at relatively lower pressures and higher volumes. So if we're gonna convert to disc brakes, we wanna look at the hydraulic system. Make sure that it is capable of putting out enough pressure if we need to change the pedal ratio or the bore size of the master cylinder okay, to, so the to front, be functional. Do you have two different pressures for the front of the for the uh, front master cylinder, front part of the master cylinder versus the rear? Uh, we actually accomplish that through the use of an adjustable proportioning valve. Oh, okay. So we so. use a, a relatively smaller bore master cylinder for the car, right. and then just turn down the pressure a little bit that's going to the drums. That way, you gotcha. get plenty of pressure up front for the discs and, and uh, adequate pressure for the drums as well. Now, the part that I'm a little concerned about is uh, this MG stuff seems a little flimsy. I mean, he's been racing this car, and it doesn't seem to have any problems with it, but is this strong enough? Do we need to go to a stronger uh, That's a probably okay. Yeah. I mean, if you look at the you know, A-arms that are on like a late model Corvette, they're these tiny little aluminum things. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, race cars, if you look at the upper A-arms, oftentimes they're very lightweight looking. So I think we're probably okay there. Okay. Um, you know, other concerns to look at is just the, where the, the, uh, the tie rod is for the steering. Right. Of course, the rotor's gonna have to clear that. Right. Uh, so we're probably gonna go with a fairly small rotor and a shallow offset hat, uh, and then come up with a bracket that we can bolt on a caliper. Okay. Um, but all in all, it looks fairly straightforward. There's, you know, four bolts on the back side of the spindle. It looks like uh, we'll be able to attach right to those uh, to make a bracket. So it looks fairly straightforward. Do you guys do a lot of uh, adapting Willwood brakes to European and British cars? Is that fairly common or is it mostly American that you do? It's, you know, the largest part of our market certainly is American muscle cars, right. but we adapt to everything. Right. We have kits for 
late model BMWs. We have kits for uh, uh, Alpine Tigers. I mean, you know, right. we're really kind of all over the map and right. adapting our brakes to whatever you've got is kind of our whole business model. Yeah, I would imagine the Sunbeam Tiger is probably much bigger than that, is it? That was a drum brake, wasn't it? Yeah, it was a drum brake. It was a really small drum brake. Yeah, I, I had one. <laughs> right, right, right. You get one kind of good stop, and that's about as yeah, good that, as it gets. Yeah, that's what I got. I got one good stop, and then everything after that went off Mulholland. It's, yeah, it wasn't good. <laughs> right. It wasn't good. Well, show us what you have here. How do we decide what to... Uh... So I brought a selection of calipers along okay. today. Um, these are all calipers that are designed to fit in fairly small spaces in relatively lightweight cars. Mm -hmm. um, so we start with, uh, this is called our DynaPro caliper. It's a small four piston caliper. Uh, this is actually uh, a caliper we made for Hondas. It's a direct bolt-in caliper for uh, late model uh, Hondas. Like S2000s? Uh, not, not that racy, more like, uh, more like Civics. Oh, okay. Uh, Civics CRXs. Uh, that age. Uh, this is our, our uh, DynaPro, we call this the low profile caliper. Mm -hmm. You can see the body is really narrow, right. uh, so it allows you to get in down really close and tight over the rotor. And then we've got our little DynaPro single. Uh, we've actually been making some variant of this caliper for nearly 30 years. Uh, it was one of our early designs. It almost looks like a motorcycle brake. Yeah, a God, lot of them light, end up it? there. It's really light, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's primarily used in sprint car racing, but uh, lots of them ended up on Harley Davidsons. In fact, one of our dealers uh, specialized in building brake kits for uh, a certain range of Harleys that use that caliper. Okay. And then that's our latest road race caliper. Right. And that's a little single piston caliper. Again, it's you know it's got a tight radius on it. It's designed to, designed to fit in a fairly small area. So any of these calipers are suitable to what we're doing. What do you recommend here? Because, you know, this is a car, A, it is so uncomfortable, you can't really drive it very long anyway. <laughs> and it's kind of fun for blasting down to Bob's Big Boy and that sure. kind of stuff. I mean, you're not going to be, uh, road race caliper really is not necessary, because you're, you're not going to be on the brakes and getting hot and in and out of corners with the thing. Right, <laughs> right. I'm not even sure it goes around corners. We'll find out. I mean, it does. It's so incredibly fast. You can almost get wheel stands out of this thing. It's, it's, it's hilarious. <laughs> Uh, what do you like here? Um, what I like that, you know, if, uh, it'll kind of come down to what my design guys like, really, mm -hmm. you know, it'll be up to them to package this whole thing. Um, I like the DynaPro single, right. and I like the low profile right. DynaPro. Um, they just give a, you can get enough piston area out of them. They're relatively small, they fit in a tight package, and, you know, we're sticking with a 15 inch wheel on this right. that doesn't have a lot of clearance. Right. So packaging is really going to be at a premium right. here. Okay. Do you think I need to go to a bigger wheel, or is a 15 going to work? I think a 15 is going to work, but we'll take the wheel and digitize that okay. uh, along with the rest of the car and see what we can pack in there. And, and if uh, the bottom line is you just can't pack anything in that wheel, then we'll cross that bridge when we come to cool. it. Cool. Well, Willwood did a great job. Here, here, here they explain what they did to it. Okay, here it is two weeks later. Uh, the car is back. As you can see, it looks totally stock, just like it left. But let's take this, uh, take the hubcap off. We'll take these lug nuts off here, and you'll see what we what he's done. Just beautiful job. You know, we like to do a lot of the work here at the shop, but when you deal with brakes, you want to go to the experts. You know, if you want to spin a couple of these, let me show you. <laughs> save time. And this is a huge bolt pattern with a really big stud, considering that the car weighs. 1,800 pounds or so. Well, being a big stud myself, I can relate to that. <laughs> there aren't many men that can pull a lug nut just using their hands, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, let's pull that wheel off and show you what we got here. Okay, boy, as you can see, a nice compact package. What, what do we do here? Uh, this is one of our Dynalite calipers. It's been specially clearanced to fit small diameter wheels, 14 and 15. It's something we originally did for some classic Mustang kits where a guy might want to keep his stock 14 inch wheel but upgrade his brakes uh, very much like what we did with your car here so it's got our dynalite caliper it's been clearanced uh, on the outboard body to fit behind the wheel we developed a special hub we actually had to space the wheel out a little bit so you got this extra the extra spacer on there mm -hmm. and the reason we had to push it all out is this tie rod comes right out into where we would want to put the rotor so we had to kind of keep this sucked in as much as we could, but move the wheel out to get, get enough clearance to package the whole thing together. Now this is a kit somebody had, say you have one of the twin can MGAs or something like that, 
this this could fit on there, wouldn't it? A absolutely. Yeah, yeah. You know, that was that was the whole idea was design the kit that could fit on anybody's MG, right. including yours. Um, and now that uh, we had the opportunity to do the work here, it'll end up in our catalog and available for sale in, in the next six months. Yeah, I'd that's say. really great. So not that many people have uh, MGs with V8 engines in them. <laughs> <laughs> But even if you have a regular MG, it gives you that much more stopping power than the standard drum. Absolutely. And, and again, it all fits under the stock wheel. That's the stock wheel. Right. And nobody knows the difference because before it was just crazy. I was going, just sailing through stops like, excuse me, sorry, thank you, excuse me, excuse me. <laughs> and you got one good stop, but there was a lot of fade, whereas now, boom, it's just like that. Right, right. The, and it allows you to keep the classic looks of the car intact. And everything here is bolt-on. You can see... Here's one of the brackets we made for it. It's just a simple bolt-on bracket. Right. So, you know, if you've got a collector car level car that you drive and you want to upgrade the brakes, you know, but you don't want to modify anything, you don't want to do something that can't be undone. Right, right. This is all bolt-on uh, and bolt-off, so you can put the classic brakes right back on. That's the great thing about this Willwood stuff. No matter what car you have, you got a 59 DeSoto, MGA, anything, you can adapt modern brakes and to me, I don't consider this resto, mod, resto modding. I just consider it making a car a lot safer. You know, I mean, let's face it, old cars, brake fade was something that people just live with, you know, whereas right. now you got a car that can stop and, 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 and like, just like a modern automobile. So it's and really when good. all the cars on the road have terrible brakes, it's, nobody in partic is particularly vulnerable. Right. But if most of the cars around you have really good brakes and yours aren't very good, well, now you're really vulnerable to an accident, uh, you know, an accident situation. That was something I noticed when we did the Mila Milia. You're, I'm driving a 1951 a Jaguar, and guys in modern Ferraris would pull up in front of you, and then they hit the brakes. And I was, I was locking up and going around them because I, I couldn't stop. Whereas if right. I had this, I would have been okay. Right. Very cool. Very cool. So as you can see, it, it, you can't get more oddball than this. <laughs> But using American components on an English automobile, it, it adapts very nicely. And it's all made right here up the street in California. So that's right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Really cool. We love the Willwood guys. They're able to adapt to cars to almost uh, put brakes on any application at all. So we're able to keep the stock wheels. And now we can really, really stop this thing. It stopped OK before. It did. But now it really stopped. Well, that's, yeah. that's a good thing. Yeah, that's a good thing. That's a good thing. Has it always had this engine? Did you go through a few versions of the car? When I found this car in 1970, it was, um, I was driving through a backwoods of some Providence town, and mm -hmm. I saw two fenders sticking out of a couple of bushes. So I pulled in, and here it was. It was all apart. Uh, I went up to the owner, and his wife said he kind of lost interest in the car, and I bought it for... 150 bucks. Wow, okay. Towed it home and uh, took it all apart and started uh, deciding that they should have had this as an optional extra right. in 19. So you never even drove it or no. put it together as a stock car? No, it had no engine, no transmission, had the original rear end in it. So I uh, okay. took, took so, all that out. <laughs> so what made you think that this would even fit? I mean, it, you, a lot of people say, oh, no, they can't be done. But you've managed to get it done. So. Tell us the problems you encountered. I did, I did one before, so I had a template to go by. I did oh, one okay. in 1962, had a 327 in it. So I okay. learned a lot from that process. And okay. this was sort of a, uh, I actually moved the engine a, little, a couple of inches forward than the old car. I don't know why I did that, but it just happened to be easier right. mounting. And then uh, I kept putting it together piece by piece. Okay, so B&M Hydro transmission, right? Yes. A three speed. What rear end are you using? I'm um, using a Chevrolet a 12 volt. Okay. It's got uh, 373 gears in it. Right, right. Positive traction. Okay. And uh, it's really fast, as you will find out in just a minute. Let's open the hood. Why? It looks like it came from the factory that way. And the thing that makes me laugh the hardest is you have a radio in it. Like you could even hear the radio. Uh, yeah, no, that was a mistake. Yeah, yeah. Started, I mean, that just, it just made me laugh when I saw the radio. But he has something really, really cool. You have these solenoids on these headers. You know, in my day, we used to call them light pipes. You'd have to uncap them. I got tired of that. Yeah, you take the Allen wrench and take the cap off and make it loud. This, you press a button, they open, they close, but we'll show you that in a minute. So tell us wh what you did to the motor. Uh, it's a, it's a, a stroke 350. I've got a mild cam in it. I wanted to keep it uh, uh, mild enough so I could drive it on the street. And mm -hmm. once you get over a certain size cam, you're right. kind of into undrivable. I had a Holley on it. Uh, carburetor, but this car sits for so long. I never drove it in the rain. Right. It had to be just right, right. to drive it. So uh, the uh, bowls would bleed out, and it would be a, a heck of a thing to start. So yeah. I put a, uh, 
uh, uh, computerized ma uh, engine management system and fuel injection. So right. now it uh, it starts pretty good, even if it's yeah. six raw. No, you just have to let the pump go. <laughs> These tires are are really kind of the, the biggest giveaway well, of all. Yeah, yeah. But you'll notice uh, the rims, when I had smaller tires on there, mm -hmm. I found some 1951 Chevrolet rims that looked like the profile of the MG. Right. I drilled them out and nobody could really tell the difference. But yeah. then I sent it out to California and had the wheels widened because I thought that was the right thing. My next modification, maybe take some padding out of here because I have to drive with my shoes off. I mean, like if you touch, you got to touch, you, if, you know, the, the if you brake move, with If you toe. move this seat as far forward as you can, you get, do get a little bit more room because your butt sinks down. Oh, really? Yeah, but I think taking some padding on Oh, that's it. No, I haven't done that. I've just been moving it back. So you think if moving it forward will get you more room? It does. All right, well, we'll try that. Okay. And uh, as you can see, well, it's got a fire extinguisher and everything. Here's all the technical data here. And this car has been in your family well, your whole life just about, right? More than half your life probably at this point. Mm. I'm 72, so. so yeah, well, that's, well, that's more that's, than that's half. A, that's a good chunk. That's 40 years. That's 40 years. We got some pictures. This is you driving the car up to the drag strips and taking it all around New England. And you got quite a reputation with this car back in the day. What was the best time you ever turned? 10-7, uh, wow. 127 miles an hour. Wow, that's pretty good. Well, that was that's pumping right. a little nitrous into it. Yeah, but that, that's You'll notice good. The, the hole in the back. Of the back, yeah, that's yeah. where the nitrous bottle set. Now we took the other part of the roll cage off because yeah. you just couldn't, you no, couldn't I, fit no, in it it's, before. It's tough. I, I find coming off exit ramps, it can tip over pretty easy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was going whoa! I was, I guess, I was kind of up on two wheels and went okay. It's really kind of a <laughs> straight it's, line. It is. Machine. It's a straight line machine. Yeah, yeah. Tell us about the radiator. You kept the stock radiator in front, obviously. <laughs> Big aluminum unit on there. Well, Very I had, nice. to, yeah, I had a custom radiator company make that. Uh, and it, it, it used to heat. Well, the biggest problem I had with this car was heating up. Yeah. I, at one time, I had a 12 and a half to 1 compression uh, wow. 350 in it, and okay. it just ran so hot. It just right. wasn't yeah. equitable. Okay. And the challenge was to get a lot of air through the uh, 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 radiator so yeah. that it would cool. But uh, stock MG, you'll notice, has wide fins. Right. And it didn't allow an air, a lot of air to go through. So I took that out and made uh, what looks like a pseudo MG grill shell in it. No, now, now when the MG guys show up with the wool cap and the string back gloves and the pipe, say that, uh, have you just... Uh, I've, I've been booed out of some car oh yeah, shows. Oh yeah, did yeah, they, oh yeah, the MG guys didn't like yeah, that. No, no. How <laughs> yeah, could you do that to this car? Yeah, well, well, but but it was the car was pretty far gone when you got it, correct? It was, it was. Yeah, yeah it, was, it, it was wrecked when you got it. Go yeah, on, I, yeah, I, that's I just, what I'm saying. I, I saved it. Yeah, you saved it, you saved <laughs> it. How big is the gas? How, how much does it hold? I'm not sure. I, I fill it up. And I make it to the next gas station and have to fill it again, well, but I'm not quite sure how much. If, if I ever got bored driving this thing, I used to watch the gas meter go down. Yeah. Was, yeah. Sort of a yeah. Yeah, nice yeah. thing to do. What but is that, about 10 gallons? It holds about gallons? 15 gallons. 15. I think. Oh, it's not bad. That's not bad. It's actually beautifully done, and it's, especially it's done by one guy in his garage, and it's fun to have all the data here. And you've got the dyno slips and everything in this engine, don't I you? I do. Yes, I do. Yeah, let's take a look at some of those. What was the most horsepower you got out of it? It's about 340 at the rear wheels. At the rear wheels. What's just what? 450? Well, somewhere around. Yeah, there. so that's, that's around right, yeah. No, it's a, it's, a great piece of, it's a great piece of history. I think it's uh, about time we went for a ride. I'm ready. That's all this thing needed, just a little more power. That's it. <laughs> I'm going to go to an MG club meet in this oh. someday just to see what they say. You should. A lot of them have come around now and, and realized that, you know, it's okay to do stuff like certain of them. The old, the old timers will never Yeah, yeah. It. Do a little drive-by. Makes you feel like you're 65 again. It does. <laughs> <laughs> At least. Try those brakes. Oh, awesome. Feels better, doesn't it? It does. Yeah. To tell you the truth, before they let go, uh, they were pretty good. Yeah. Like yeah. this, but uh, never, not this good. So, what engine you got in your 33 Chevy? Is it a 33? Uh, yeah. yeah. 572. Oh, well, oh, okay. You know, she I have the very first 572 you do? in my garage. <laughs> it's sitting in my Buick. They built that engine, and they cast my name into the, the valve cover. How cool is that? Yeah, it's serial number 001, 572, yeah. 
That's did, a great motor, isn't it? Uh, uh, oh, well, yeah. I shaved the heads. Oh, okay. I put a, a dominated carburetor on. All I got right. a cam in it. This will, if you heat up the tires in a water box or something, this will pull the front end off the ground. Yeah, I, I know. Carol and I were out driving one day, and I was giving a, a, a left, a right-hand yeah. turn signal. A couple of girls pulled up aside and thought I was flipping them off, so they oh. were shouting, yelling, screaming. That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody knows what that is anymore. No, no, they don't. I like the way the disc brakes sit in there. You just yeah, you can't even tell. We wanted to keep the stock wheel, you know. We didn't want to go to a different wheel. Yeah, oh, nice. Wheelwood is very good, you know. They're I, really the best. They they can adapt anything to any application. I know they've got a good reputation. I've, and they uh, love this kind of stuff, you know. Yeah. One of those Chevy drums on the back. Yes. Yeah. Nails are fine. Yeah. It blasts right by them. That's good. That love catches again. Boy, this thing's a lot of fun. Let me show you something really cool. Take a look at those headers down there, okay? Now, while uh, you hit the switch here on the dash, show them open. We'll see how she cruises on the freeway, and then, of course, the all-important question, will it do a burnout? Two old guys with white hair doing a burnout. Never underestimate the immaturity factor. You should have driven it out here from Rhode Island. Uh, I would have liked to. Couldn't afford the gas. Could be his last burnout with the car, so let's make it a good one. All right. Think you still got it? Can you still remember how to do it? Uh, I'll give it a shot. Uh huh. I'll give it a shot. Need some Viagra? You all right? I, I, I'd like that. Yeah. All right. Old guys rule. We'll see you guys next week. David, thanks a lot. Awesome, Jay. Thank hey, you. You can't beat the old hot riders. I'm just telling you. Kids today. Mm-hmm. <laughs>